I hated high school. So why was I coming back? Tonight, Friday, April 14th, was my 10-year anniversary. That's right, I'm 27. Bates Bartholomew at your service. I've heard all the jokes about my name. They grew old back in middle school, and if some idiot was silly to say it again, I punched him. I got into a lot of fights. Then when my parents split up, I went with Dad to Las Vegas, Nevada, and I went to a new school. The jokes about my name started again, and then stopped when I hit someone. The first of many, many fights. As punishment, and because I was considered a bad influence, I wasn't allowed to go to prom. Thanks, Vice Principal Adelaide Watson. Seriously, why am I coming back? Name, the cutesy cheerleader wannabe now turned housewife asked as I got to the head of the line. Bates Bartholomew, I said. She glanced up, a slightly frightened look about her eyes. Yep, she remembered me. The guy with the attitude who always got in fights. She rifled through the alphabetical name tags, found mine, and said, Did you RSVP with a plus one because I don't see a second tag attached with yours? No, I'm here solo, I said. I see, she said. She got a couple of papers together and handed me a packet, my name tag, and confirmation receipt for dinner, and the raffle ticket. You wouldn't know if Hayden Ross has arrived yet, I asked. The slight lift to her lips told me she remembered him too, and fondly as well. She thumbed through the name tags, checked a roster, and finally said, Yes, he has. Does he have a plus one? I asked. She looked at the roster again, running her finger along the names, and then said, Yes, plus his security guards. They've already picked up their tags. I thanked her, and then she looked at me and said, It's cocktails until seven, then we serve dinner and begin the program. The drinks are limited, but wet. Please proceed to the cafeteria. For a second, I thought she was flirting with me, but one glance at her ring finger changed my mind. Besides, I prefer men. I should have expected that Hayden had security guards. Somebody with his fame, reputation, and skills would need a little protection. The cutesy cheerleader's eyes flickered past me, and then quickly focused on some papers on her table. She mumbled something that sounded like, Next, please. What had I done? Except it wasn't me she had focused on. A sharp perfume invaded my space, and a sharper, shrill voice said, Well, 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 look who should crawl back into the dumpster. Bates Bartholomew. I thought we were done with you a decade ago. How could I forget that voice? Vice Principal Watson, you remember me, I said, turning to face the woman. I remember all the bad kids, she said, and you, Bates Bartholomew, were the worst of your year, maybe of all my years. Kids like you belong in jail. There was no kindness in her voice. Approaching sixty, easily, she wore an apricot business suit with salon-styled graying hair. She was the vice principal that had made my life hell. Her scowl was laser etched into her face. I never liked her, and evidently, she still didn't like me. It's been ten years, I said, and I simply came to reconnect with my old friends. She scowled, pounded my chest with her index finger, and said, Don't cause any problems. I have the police on speed dial. Remember that. Whatever conversations had been going on around me suddenly stopped. Watson received a call on her hidden earbud, and she marched off. Was it my imagination, or did everybody suddenly sigh with relief? Whatever, I'll stay out of Vice Principal Watson's way. I made my way through the halls. The cheerful beige halls seemed the same, but smaller. The brown lockers looked the same, but smaller. 
the place smelled of body spray and pencils and floor cleaner. The posters about rules seemed the same. No running, no goofing off, no throwing stuff, no food in the halls, don't be late, no swearing, do your best, take pride in your school. Did anybody keep any of the rules? The cafeteria had changed. All the lunch tables had been moved somewhere else, leaving a large, empty space, now filled with round tables and metal folding chairs. Red tablecloths covered the tables, and red and white streamers looped across the ceiling. A temporary stage had been set up at one end of the room, and on it was a large movie screen currently showing old yearbook pictures. A couple of red and white balloon bouquets were to the side of the screen, and a large red and white balloon arch covered the makeshift stage. The room held about twenty-five or thirty tables, six chairs per table. I did the math. Little more than half of the people who graduated would be here. A series of pictures along one of the walls displayed our graduating classes, student body officers, the cheerleaders, and members of the football team, basketball team, and baseball team. In one corner was a couple of tables set up to be the bar. The kitchens had been converted to a space for the caterers. They had used some type of mood light to give the large area an intimate feel. Up front, by the stage, was a large portrait of Hayden Ross in his basketball uniform for some L.A. team. He was billed as the guest of honor, even though he graduated with us. How to describe Hayden Ross, the multi-talented basketball star that was scouted by the local college and got a full-ride scholarship with them. During his senior year, he took them to the Sweet 16 and the Final Four. He was declared VIP in the final playoff game because he led the college to victory with the most shots made. When he graduated, Hayden had the college record for most successful free throws in a season. It was said that he never missed a shot. After college, he was scouted by some big-name team in L.A. and hired for big money. He had the contracts, he had the money, he had the name, but he never settled down. Our great high school success story. A real rags-to-riches story. If America had up-and-coming royalty, Hayden Ross would be one of them. He'd put in the time for it, though. I'd often see him practice for hours after school on the basketball court, or lifting weights in the weight room, or running laps on the track. The coaches worked with their star player all the time, and when they didn't, he did it himself. Too bad Hayden and I never socialized. At all. In public. We acted like we never knew each other. In public. It was different in private. We were secret boyfriends. I was the new kid who didn't fit in, who had the attitude, was failing everything, who only wanted to be left alone, but was never left alone. And wouldn't you know it, I secretly crushed on the most out-of-reach person in school, Hayden Ross. That never stopped me from loving him privately or him loving me, privately. Get us away from prying eyes and we had our secret romance. That man could kiss. It had been ten years, but the memory of his lips on mine still made me blush. The packet for the reunion included a program. I scanned it. Normally, big events were held in the gym. But the prom committee was getting the gym ready for senior prom, which was tomorrow night. Makes a weird sort of sense because this close to graduation, so much was happening at the old school that every second and every room was booked. The auditorium had a student play scheduled for next week, and the library had some elementary school function going on. It wasn't hard to spot Hayden. When they say your heart skips a beat, they weren't kidding. He had grown up and grown incredible. However, Hayden had a gorgeous blonde woman hanging on his elbow and two men wearing black suits standing at his side. 
two more had taken up positions around the room. If you didn't count his bodyguards and the arm candy, he still wasn't alone. At least twenty people crowded around him. Easily the most successful person and the most popular person, he was also the tallest person. Hayden was very easy to spot. Standing at least six foot six, eight inches taller than me, Hayden wasn't the skinny scarecrow I used to make out with in the extra locker room used only for visiting teams. His body had matured, and he'd become a very sexy man. His light gray tailored blazer did not hide his powerful shoulders or broad chest or the way his arms filled out his sleeves. His black jeans accentuated the slimness of his muscular hips. He had black hair trimmed short and dark eyes that used to sparkle every time he saw me. What we did our senior year was our secret. Nobody knew that the famous jock and the worst troublemaker in school were secretly a couple. Hayden was the reason I endured my senior year. He was the reason I brought my grades up. He was the reason I graduated. He was the reason I survived Vice Principal Watson when I wanted to punch her out. Because of him, I made something of myself. He gave me hope that I could be better. After high school, his love of basketball took him in a different direction than me. He went to college to play, and if the news reports are right, he signed a million-dollar contract. Meanwhile, I got my head together. I wasn't the angry guy I used to be. I got an associate's degree in finance, and now I'm an average guy working at an average bank, making a nice salary. I had nothing but fond memories of Hayden, my first true boyfriend, my first love. Ironically, the class president and other student body officers were at the same table as Hayden. All the popular kids still sat together. It made me chuckle. Even though we had graduated a decade ago, some people acted like we were still in high school. Would Hayden even remember me? It had been ten years, and, according to the gossip mags, he had had several relationships, all with women. What if I gathered the courage to go up and talk to him? I stopped off at the makeshift bar. The bartender was one of the old cheerleaders, Shammy. Why her parents named her Chambray is one of the great mysteries of high school. She was one of the nice cheerleaders, too. Hey, Bates, I didn't think you'd come, she said. Almost didn't, I said. I don't have a lot of good memories of this place. In other words, Shammy said, Vice Principal Watson made your life hell, too. I think half our class hates her. She almost didn't let me go to prom. Ouch. I winced. Sorry, Shammy said. I forgot she didn't let you go to prom. Who else did she have it in for? I asked. Well, me, for starters, Shammy said. Why? You were one of the good kids, I said. Too many unexcused absences, Shammy said. I had to get my kid brother and sister off to school because Mom was working. Watson was a jerk about it. Anyway, what can I get you? You can have anything you want as long as it's a glass of white wine, a screwdriver, a tequila sunrise, or a Michelob. That's all the supplies I got. I replied by saying, I'll have a screwdriver. Watson and I never got along because I was the angry transfer kid who got into too many fights. Name one kid Watson actually liked, Shammy said. Pouring a shot of vodka and three ounces of orange juice into a glass. Remember Jackson? Shammy said. She hated Jackson because Jackson was so smart. Did you know Jackson owns his own software company now? Did you know she had it in for Lisa, too? I don't think Lisa ever left the library. She wrote some pretty steamy stuff, even back in high school. Watson got her in trouble for it, too. 
Lisa got the last laugh. Guess how many books she's written. Why do you mention them? I asked. Somebody put all the outcasts at the same table, and all of you are as far from the front as possible, Shammy said. Watson do this? I asked. The woman remembers every grudge, Shammy said. She even planned this entire night. Wouldn't let the reunion committee say a thing. Still a control freak. It's water under the bridge, I said, as Shammy handed me the screwdriver. Except this bridge came to the reunion, Shammy said, and nodded towards Hayden. One of the people around Hayden was Vice Principal Watson. What's she going to do this time? Put us in detention, I said, and Shammy smiled. Wouldn't put it past her, Shammy said. What if we had been more courageous? Stood up to the old hag. Like me showing up to prom in spite of being banned, I asked. Shammy paused in front of me and looked me in the eye when she said, You were the only person she didn't let go. I didn't dislike anybody else back in high school, but I sure disliked her. I walked over to Hayden. God, he'd only gotten better looking. Only one problem. There were sure a lot of people around him. How would I get around his bodyguards, let alone all the other people? Since the event hadn't officially started, Hayden was still schmoozing with everybody. He was always good at hanging out with people. He also held a screwdriver and casually chatted with the blonde woman. I sighed. My old teenage crush had never faded. I still loved him. I stood nearby, watching Hayden, wondering what life could have been like if we had somehow stayed in touch. A dozen people clamored for his attention. But Hayden seemed anxious. He quickly scanned the crowd. With his bodyguards here, he didn't have to be afraid of anybody mobbing him. The blonde woman noticed me staring and tugged on Hayden until he leaned down. She whispered something in his ear. Did she know me? I've never seen her before, and what did she whisper? I tried to see if their hands wore wedding bands, but I couldn't see through the people. Hayden straightened to his full height, saw me, and his lips momentarily quirked into a small smile. His eyes seemed to sparkle, just like back in the day. Almost casually, he gave me a chin lift. I raised my glass to him. His smile grew larger. How about that? He did remember me. I wanted to talk to him, but not with all the people around. Vice Principal Watson was one of the people around Hayden. My only year here had been Vice Principal Watson's first year. She was appointed the Vice Principal in charge of school discipline and was trying to make a name for herself. I don't know a single person who liked her. There was no way Hayden could escape that crowd. I waited a couple more minutes, hoping for an opening that never came. I drained my drink and went back to Shammy for a second. As Shammy mixed the vodka and the orange juice, she said, Maybe now isn't the right time to tell you, but, uh, um, you know Hayden never married. He sure dated a lot, I said. Shammy made sure no one was close. And then she whispered, Take a chance, because you might not see him again, at least until the fifteen-year reunion. What do you mean? I asked. She giggled and nodded to Hayden. Just saying your little secret wasn't much of a secret. She handed me my second drink. Somebody else came up to the bar, and Shammy got busy preparing a drink for another customer. What did Shammy mean? Did other people know about our secret rendezvous? Did it matter? After high school, I didn't hide that I was gay. But maybe Hayden did keep it a secret. I'd always suspected he was more bi than gay. Maybe our time together had only been experimenting for him, his questioning phase, and because of it, he considered himself straight. Maybe being around me would make him uncomfortable. Only a handful of professional basketball players had officially come out. 
but not that many. Six, I think. Maybe it was a non-issue in the sports world. After all, they're more interested in player stats than personal lives, unless it caused some kind of scandal. I edged closer to the crowd around Hayden, trying to catch his eye. A couple of people were talking to him about making a charity visit to some hospice. Somebody else was gushing about his basketball stats. Was that Watson talking to Hayden about a business opportunity involving cemetery plots? Weird. I finally got to see Hayden's and the blonde woman's hands. No wedding rings. They could still be a couple, though. Too many people for me to get through. Hayden wouldn't have time for an old secret boyfriend, especially if Hayden had decided he was straight. The old student body president went up to the stage, cleared his throat, and said, I'd like to thank all of you for coming. If everybody could take their seats, we'll begin with dinner and a slideshow of our senior year. I went back to my seat. Jackson and his wife, plus Lisa and her husband, had already arrived. The baddest boy of the school and the two nerdiest nerds, Lisa said. They shouldn't have put us together. Sounds like a story. Welcome to the nerd table, Bates, Jackson said, without a trace of bitterness. He was proud of being a nerd. Lisa, too. Don't worry, guys. My violent days are in the past. I'm a bank teller now, I said. Tell me more, Lisa giggled. My main character in the novel I'm working on is a bad boy trying to make good. Other than Hayden, Jackson and Lisa were probably the two most successful people in the room. So why were they delegated to the back, with me? Back in the day, they must have gone on Watson's bad side too. Well, the caterers served dinner, a chicken cordon bleu with white sauce, honey roasted carrots, garlic bread, and a slice of strawberry cheesecake. I chatted with Jackson and Lisa and their spouses. We all vaguely remembered each other and enjoyed bragging about fancy trips we'd taken, or promotions at our jobs, or how Lisa's two children were doing. Jackson and his wife didn't have any kids, but he had a lot of stories about starting his own company. Suddenly, they became quiet, and their eyes focused behind me. Somebody was behind me. The voice behind me chilled me because it belonged to Vice Principal Watson, and she said, You'll have a much better view of the program back at your old seat. Besides, I haven't finished telling you my proposal. A voice I hadn't heard for a decade replied, I came to see an old boyfriend, not talk business. Bates, is the seat next to you taken? I turned. It was Hayden, beautiful Hayden, and he stood right behind me. For a second, it seemed like a halo surrounded him, and hearts floated about him, and an angelic boy band sung angelic harmony. I couldn't help but smile. Hayden smiled back. Lisa suppressed a chuckle. Unfortunately, Vice Principal Watson stood behind Hayden, and she said, We already have a seat for you, next to the stage. Besides, you're the guest of honor. Two of Hayden's bodyguards looked for instructions. One said, Sir? Without taking his eyes off me, Hayden said, Vice Principal Watson, please excuse me for a few minutes. Bates and I have a lot to catch up on. The look Watson gave me would have curdled buttermilk, and she said, Him? You were friends with Bates Bartholomew? Boyfriends, actually, Hayden said. With a nod from Hayden, one of the bodyguards led Watson away, while the other stood at discreet distance behind Hayden. He kept anyone from approaching Hayden and me. I gestured and said, This is Jackson and his wife. They run a software business. And Lisa and her husband. She writes novels. Join us. Hayden took the seat next to me. We smiled, and for a moment, it seemed like we had gone back in time ten years, and we were secretly, desperately, passionately, in love with each other. Shammy brought over a couple of glasses of white wine for me and Hayden and winked at me. 
When had she figured out what was between me and Hayden? My table mates were not used to being with a star and asked Hayden all kinds of questions. He answered them with a casual air. Me? I was just happy to be with him. While we ate our cheesecake, I asked Hayden, Are you into blondes now? Her? That's Rachel, my publicist, Hayden said. And no, we are not a thing. Are you seeing anyone? No, I said. It looks like life agrees with you. Hayden took a sip of his wine, leaned in his chair and said, There is no way to say this but to, uh, just say it. Sorry if it sounds blunt, but, well, ten years ago, I made a mistake that I've regretted since. Is that why you came tonight? I asked. My stomach became a little nervous. This was the part where Hayden would tell me he regretted our time together. At least he had the courage to tell me in person, even if it was ten years late. I would have come at the five-year reunion and said something, but I was in the wrong part of the country, Hayden said. It took you ten years to realize you'd made a mistake, I said, softly avoiding looking at him. I'm uh, kind of dense like that, he said, and a little bit of a coward. I only nodded. You see, he said, they say you compare every love to your first love. I didn't realize that uh, what we had was love. Not until I met someone who said they loved me. They didn't treat me like you did. What you and I had was fun, but it was more than that. What do you mean? I asked. Hayden looked at some random thing for a moment before he said, I wanted to take you to prom, but was too scared to ask. Then I was relieved that Watson wouldn't let you go, and then I felt guilty for feeling relieved. It's all ten years ago. Nothing to worry about, I said. Ten years ago, Hayden continued. Two guys going to prom together was almost unheard of. Most people would have thought it was a joke. But not me. I was serious about you, but I didn't know how to say it and was too scared to admit it. Are you trying to apologize? Because it's not needed, I said. Hayden slowly nodded, looked at his drink and said, Maybe it is. It took me years to realize that what we had was special. Nobody else compared to the feelings I had for you. That's why I came tonight. I needed to see you. I wish we could have gone to prom together, I said. Prom is tomorrow night, and they do have the gym mostly set up, Lisa said. Only then did I realize that everybody at our table had been listening to our conversation. Do you know what's cute, Lisa said. You two still think nobody noticed. Nobody said anything because everybody hated Watson. Um, uh, you knew about us, Hayden said, with an embarrassed sigh. Lisa giggled and said, About you two sneaking into the visiting team locker room? Didn't notice a thing. Jackson took a sip of his wine and said, Not everybody noticed, but us nerds notice things other people miss. We know what it's like not to fit in. And being gay in high school is already hard enough, so we kept our mouths shut. Hayden took hold of my hand and said, And I guess if Watson found out, she would have put us in detention for life. Thanks for not letting Watson know, I said, and toasted Jackson and Lisa with my drink. You know, this party is pretty boring, Lisa said. Let's be bad and go check out the gym. I gave Hayden a jaunty leer. Back in the day, it meant time for some alone time in the visiting team locker room. Hayden Ross, would you care to join me for prom? I said with a huge smile. Before Hayden could answer, there came a burst of applause and the student body president yelled, Let's hear it for Hayden Ross, everybody. Hayden, come up to the stage. What the heck was this guy talking about? We both looked at the stage, at the spotlight highlighting Hayden's former seat, 
now empty, and the awkward smile on Rachel the publicist's face. For a second, the student body president had an equally dumb look before he recovered and said, Does anyone know where Hayden is? Wouldn't you know it, Vice Principal Watson was sitting behind the student body president on the makeshift stage, and she got up and walked to the president, and she whispered something to the student body president and pointed in our direction. The spotlight swiveled and suddenly highlighted our table. There you are, the student body president said, slumming with the second stringers. I very publicly flipped him off. The guy was always a jerk. Shammy suddenly yelled from the bar, Don't make Bates mad. You'll regret it. It got a chuckle from the audience. I didn't regret my disrespect. Especially when Vice Principal Watson threw me the look. I accidentally had flipped her off as well. I didn't regret disrespecting her, either. Hayden took a deep breath, waved at the audience, but didn't stand. Softly, he mumbled, It's like this everywhere I go. Sorry, Bates. We'll talk later, I said. Usual spot, he asked, but there was a serious tone behind his sad smile. Lisa and Jackson and their spouses glanced at each other. Jackson nodded to the others and said, Nerds to the rescue. I couldn't help but feel a little sad as I said, Five minutes, Hayden. Don't be late. As Hayden got up, the couples at the table got up. Hayden went to the stage, followed by one of his bodyguards. Jackson and Lisa and their spouses left the cafeteria. I was alone. Hayden wasn't happy about leaving me. I wasn't happy to see him go. I had so much I wanted to talk to him about, but I couldn't think of a single thing to say. Don't be shy, Hayden. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a hand, the student body president yelled. Hayden went up to the stage to collect some type of commemorative plaque. Meanwhile, I took our two empty glasses to Shammy, and, with a knowing smirk, she refilled them. I left the cafeteria amidst the riotous noise and applause for Hayden. Did anybody notice the empty back table? Only Shammy. I didn't leave alone. One of Hayden's bodyguards went with me. The gym door had a table propping it open. The bodyguard didn't say anything, but quickly did a walkthrough of the gym before standing by the door. Have fun, he said. The gym was a standard gym, designed as one large basketball court surrounded by bleachers. The basketball hoops and backstops had been raised to the ceiling, and about ten feet above the floor was a dark disco ball. Several red and white banners hung in the shadowy space, but several more lay across the bleachers waiting to be hung. Several tables, cluttered with more decorations, stood near the walls of the gym. Save for emergency lighting, the place was dark and quiet. Even the noise of the cafeteria didn't reach here. I wandered to a table in the center of the room, almost under the disco ball, pushed a couple of decorations over, and set our wine glasses down. A click sounded from the wall, then a second. Lisa was holding her phone, now in flashlight mode, over Jackson's shoulder. Jackson leaned over an open electrical panel. How old is this school? Lisa's husband said. This breaker box looks ancient. You guys know you're on security cameras, right? I said, walking over. Think about it logically, Lisa said. The door to the gym was already open because they were installing decorations. The electrical panel was already open because they were installing spotlights and the disco ball. And what are the cameras going to record? Jackson flipping a breaker? What are they going to do? Charges with a misdemeanor for turning some lights on? Any judge would laugh his butt off. I chuckled and said, Good point. We are all guilty of sneaking into the gym and turning the lights on. The judge might sentence us to three minutes of community service. More likely buy him lunch, Jackson said. 
He eased in closer to read the tiny writing on one of the breakers. Jackson's wife pointed to a circuit breaker and said, Try that one. Jackson clicked it. Lights turned on, but not the main lights. Secondary lights that gave the room a dim ambiance and made the banners glow. It's almost romantic, I said. Prom night for the lovebirds, Lisa said and giggled again. Hayden entered and walked to me. We didn't say anything, but I brought a step stool over and stood on it. Our eyes were now almost equal. We held each other, smiling. Auxiliary ceiling number three. I think this is it, Jackson's wife said. Try number four, too, Lisa said. Where's the stereo feeds, Lisa's husband asked. Lisa pointed to another panel. Bates, you're not the only one who can break the rules, Jackson said. Lisa giggled. Feels like we're teens again. If I have this figured, three, two, one, Jackson said. Ta-da! Jackson clicked a couple of switches. Spotlights hit the disco ball, and a flood of sparkles filled the room. The disco ball began to rotate. Lisa's husband connected his phone to the speaker system, and music suddenly filled the gym. A dance playlist perfect for prom. Jackson fiddled at the electrical panel again clicked another couple of buttons, and white and red Christmas lights suddenly lit up. They surrounded most of the gym, though unhung sets were on a couple of tables, but those also lit up. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present prom, Jackson said with a flourish. We all cheered. A squeal came from the door. Wait until I tell everybody it's prom night, Shammy said, entering the gym and carrying a couple more glasses of white wine. She set the glasses on the table nearest me and Hayden and ran out. I held Hayden. Just to the side of the gym was the door to the visitor locker room, the secret place Hayden and I made out in. I was, um, afraid that what we shared was bothering you, I whispered. He held me, almost intimately, and said, Forgive me, I should have taken you to prom no matter what Watson said. Nothing to forgive, because she would have banned you from the rest of the year and activities, I said. Hayden's warmth, his nearness, the subtleness of his cologne. And I remembered our first timid kiss a decade ago. Except, right now, wasn't a decade ago. Hayden was in my arms right now. Glittering, sparkling lights, romantic music, sparkles flowing across every surface. There was magic in the air. Was this what prom was like? Heaven was slow dancing with Hayden. I held him, my head pressed to his chest, his heart strong, and his arms tightened as if protecting me. I found it ironic. The basketball star, protecting someone who used to get into so much trouble. It was nice having someone hold me. If it wasn't for Hayden, I don't know if I would have even graduated. Other couples trickled in and began to enjoy the magic. Jackson played with the electronic panel a little more, and a spotlight hit the floral arch for sweetheart pictures, and more red and white lights lit up around the gym. It became enchanting. His job done, Jackson and his wife joined the people dancing. Lisa and her husband stood at the side, chatting with more couples. We should have done this years ago, Hayden said. Our lips, now on the same level, met. They remembered the feel, the emotion, the love. We kissed like we hadn't seen each other for ten years and didn't care who saw. A smooth kiss, as good as any I remembered. Our lips had not forgotten each other and moved together as one, as if we had been together all this time. My left hand intertwined with his right, our fingers becoming hopelessly tangled. The heat from his kiss excited me in a way I had missed. His mouth gently left mine. 
eased past mine, kissed down to my neck, across my shoulder, to a place just below my ear. I shivered. I needed this, I whispered, and pulled his lips back to mine. Let's make this the prom we should have had, he said. Hayden led me to the sweetheart picture arch. Another couple had their phone out and begged us to take their picture. We did, and then they returned the favor. The gym was full of almost all the people from the reunion. Some were dancing. Some stood to the sides and chatted. Shammy had somehow brought her makeshift bar in here and was serving white wine. The music shifted to something wilder, and Lisa's husband adjusted the volume upwards. I was happy. A new song started, one that fit my mood perfectly, Slow Dancing by V. I led Hayden back to the step stool, and I stood on it and held him. Do you think, I whispered, we could restart us? I mean, it's been ten years and we're adults, and we both have different lives. You travel around the country, and I'm a banker now. But do you think we could stay in contact or something? That's why I came back, Hayden said. Something is missing in my life. Everybody I date, or who I meet, we don't have that same connection, like you and me. Do you think it's still there between us? Or maybe we've grown too far apart. Or maybe it was only a teenage thing. We can try and see what happens, I said, and laid my head on his shoulder. From my vantage in the center of the gym, it seemed like everybody had come to the gym. Either they were dancing or socializing or sipping wine. The lights twinkled, the disco ball made the room glitter, and everybody seemed to be having a fun time. Was this what prom was supposed to be like? Is this what I had missed all those years ago? It didn't matter. I had it now. Hayden held me, and I remembered the love we once shared. That love was waking up. Our final two games are home games, Hayden said. Would you be my guest? And then I'll have time off. What if the two of us went on vacation together? Let's go someplace different like the Bahamas, just you and me, and let's see if we can make the magic come back. The magic has already come back, I softly said. Give me the dates and I'll arrange vacation. Hayden's grin stretched from ear to shining ear. Excuse me, everybody, Vice Principal Watson yelled from the doorway. The reunion committee has planned this night down to the minute. We have a special presentation by our former cheerleaders, and next we have a fun raffle, followed by highlights of our most famous alumni. Would everybody please return to the cafeteria? Do you want to go see? Hayden asked. I'm happy holding you, and I don't want to move, I said. My thoughts exactly, Hayden said. His arms tightening around me. We both ignored Watson and kept dancing, though I couldn't move much because I stood on the step stool so my head would be even with Hayden's. I think you've grown taller, I whispered. Part of me was vaguely aware that none of the other couples had left. Music still played over the speakers. I have a hotel room, Hayden whispered. Do you want to come over for a nightcap? We can get a bottle of champagne and order room service in the morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Principal Watson yelled, please come back to the cafeteria so we can continue the program. You aren't supposed to be in here. Chill out, Watson, Shammy yelled. Nobody's hurting anything. It's prom night all over again, and all everyone is doing is dancing. Hayden and I turned to look, and Hayden said, Thanks to you, Watson. Bates never got to enjoy prom the first time, so lay off. Bates Bartholomew, Vice Principal Watson said. I should have known you'd be in the middle of this. Do you ever not cause problems? Shut up, you old wrench, 
Lisa said. Why do you have to ruin everything? Vice Principal Watson marched over to the electrical panel and looked over the panel. She then walked to the speaker panel and looked at the phone. With a simple swipe, she canceled the music. Everybody's groan sounded like the screams on the Titanic. Don't touch my phone, Lisa's husband yelled. Vice Principal Watson walked over to a set of unopened boxes, ruffled through them, and pulled out an odd, flat package. Then she walked over to me. Her eyes did not sparkle. Great. She always did blame me for everything. Ten years later, nothing had changed. She could have yelled at Jackson for turning the lights on, or yelled at Lisa's husband for the music or Shammy and Hayden for yelling at her, but no, she blamed everything on me. I hadn't done anything bad this time except leave the cafeteria and their dumb program. I let go of Hayden's shoulders and said, Hayden, let's leave. Vice Principal Watson stopped before me and ordered, Bates Bartholomew, stay put. Her voice always made me feel insecure. Why did I suddenly stop moving? Hayden's hand found my hand and held it. Stop picking on Bates, Shammy yelled. Why do you have it in for him anyway? I swear, half the stuff you said he did, he never did. He was too busy making out with Hayden, and we all know it. Silence, Vice Principal Watson yelled in her voice that caused everybody to stand straighter and mentally prepare to get the tongue lashing of our lives. We all shut up. Bates Bartholomew, Watson yelled. I was so startled, I slipped off the step stool. In one quick motion, Hayden scooped me up in his arms, laughing. I started laughing too. Bates Bartholomew, Watson said, you were the worst disciplinary case I've ever dealt with, and you are the only person who I have ever banned from prom. A decision I have grown to regret As annoyed as I was with you at the time, prom should never be used as a disciplinary tool, even on you. I know I'm going to regret this, but Bates Bartholomew, by the power vested in me as vice principal of this school, I declare you our first and probably only alumni prom king. Does anyone object? Hayden set me down on the floor, smiling and clapping my shoulders. Vice Principal Watson scanned the crowd. No one objected. In that case, Bates, she said, may you bring honor to the crown. Wait a second, you're making me prom king? I asked, somewhat dumbfounded. Enjoy your night, your majesty, Vice Principal Watson said. She unfolded the cardboard crown, gave it to Hayden, and he placed it on my head. Don't worry, Hayden said to me, his face brimming with happiness. We will enjoy every minute of the night. The End Thank you, my friends, for listening. I'm Gio, author and reader of this piece. If you'd like to hear more stories about gay men falling in love, please visit my channel. See you next Wednesday. Peace.